Hey everyone, if you've worked with Azure DevOps for a while, you've likely heard of personal access tokens. In this video, we'll talk about what personal access tokens are, what they're used for, and how to create and manage them. Let's go. When you sign into Azure DevOps, you generally sign in using a Microsoft account or an Azure AD account. However, third-party tools don't authenticate in the same manner. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at how third-party tools authenticate with Azure DevOps, including any custom extensions that you might want to use or create that make use of the Azure DevOps extensibility model. So when you're working with third-party tools or the Azure DevOps SDK, you'll be required to authenticate before being allowed access. This is often handled by providing the tool or API with a personal access token. So for example, the popular source control tool Gitkraken requires a personal access token when connecting to Azure DevOps. So what is a personal so, what exactly is a personal access token anyway? Okay. PC load letter? What the f does that mean? As I mentioned a moment ago, the typical method for authenticating with Azure DevOps is to use a Microsoft account or Azure AD account, such as an Office 365 account or other Azure AD account that's been associated with your Azure DevOps organization. However, since by definition, third-party tools and extensions aren't provided by Microsoft, we should avoid handing out our Azure DevOps credentials. If you were to use your personal credentials for third-party access, for example, the third-party tool would have access to everything that you would normally have access to with an Azure DevOps. So if you're making use of a custom utility that is only supposed to create work items, there is nothing stopping the developer of that utility from gaining access to your source code or anything else assuming your credentials have access. This is not a good security model. So instead, we should be authenticating with personal access tokens. A personal access token is essentially a password associated with a specific identity. So for example, if you sign into Azure DevOps as John Smith and create a new personal access token, then anyone that has access to that token can perform actions as John Smith, with some caveats that we'll cover shortly. Since a personal access token is just like a password, it must be managed accordingly. In fact, one could argue it's more sensitive than a typical password since no user ID is required to make use of it. You only need to gain access to the token itself to use it. So, now that we understand when and why we might want to use a personal access token, let's take a look at how we can create and manage them. Uh, before we start, I'd like to mention that Microsoft has recently introduced a new user experience for managing PATs. At the moment, this is still in preview and the new PAT experience needs to be enabled. However, depending on when you're watching this video, it might have become the default experience. So just to cover our bases, let's take a quick look at how you can turn preview options on and off in Azure DevOps. To enable this feature, click on your profile picture in the upper right hand corner and select preview settings. Scroll down, find the new PAT experience, turn it on. Then you can close the preview settings and now you'll have the new PAT UI experience. Okay, so to manage your personal access tokens, you need to click on your profile image and select the security option. By default, the personal access tokens will be selected. As you can see right here, personal access tokens over here. On the right hand side, you'll see a list of all of your active PATs. As you can see here, I've got quite a few of them defined for my account. Some of these are for various API related projects, but most of them are just simply for testing and demos that I've been doing over time. So taking a closer look, you can see that each token has a name uh, that is intended to serve as a reminder of what each particular PAT is for. Um, you might come back you know, several months from now wondering, what was that token used for? Uh, the status column here will show you whether the token is active, whether it's expired or revoked, and then the account, which is really your organization, uh, will show you which Azure DevOps organization this access token has been scoped to, and finally, the expiration date of the token itself. As you can see here, all I can, or all I have listed are active tokens. If you click on this drop down over here, you can filter. So for example, I can say, hey, show me all my tokens. And you can see I've got quite a few tokens that have expired here. I've got some that I revoked for whatever reason. And then again, I have several active ones. So let's go back to our active tokens. If you want to view the particular, or excuse me, the particular attributes for a token, um, like, like this one, for example, just select it and then click the edit button and then you can see all of the details around that token for example the name that I've given that token apparently I decided to call that one my name for some reason um, which organizations it's tied to 
and then what the expiration date is for example you can set it to be 30 days out 60 90 days out or make a custom defined date to be um, up to one year out from the time you create or update the token you can set the scopes that you want this token to be limited to you can have full access or in this case I've got a custom defined set of scopes for this particular token so if I scroll down you'll see this has read write and manage access to source code and I believe that's it for this token. Oh, I take that back. It can also read packages uh, from the build pipelines. And then when you're done, click Save, and that will uh, make any updates. You notice one thing here that's not displayed is the access token itself, and we'll cover that here in a moment. Okay, so let's take a look at creating a new token. We'll start by clicking on the Create New Token button over here and we'll get the dialog come up for the properties for the token. Let's give it a name like YouTube Demo Token. We'll go over to the organization Moonspace and let's set a custom defined expiration date. Let's set it for let's say June 30th of this year. Your expiration date can be up to one year out from the date at which you create the token. So tokens can last for up to one year before they expire. Uh, we'll set custom defined scopes for this token and again scopes basically is what allows your token to access certain features or areas of Azure DevOps so in this case we'll give it read scope for work items and nothing else which essentially means this token can be used to read work items if some were to, someone were to use this token and attempt to for example get at your source code um, it would be unauthorized so we'll go ahead and click on create and Notice here that the personal access token itself is generated. It looks like just a big long cryptic string of characters and numbers. You can click on this little icon here to copy it to the clipboard. Take note of this warning though because once you click close down here in this dialog, you'll never see this token again. So you want to make sure you save this token off to some kind of password manager or something like that uh, because again, you won't, you won't be able to get access to it once you click out. So I'm going to go ahead and close and then refresh here and if I go looking and there's my token I just created YouTube demo token so this token as you can see it expires on June 30th 2019 so let's say we have a token that's been around for a while and someone got a hold of your token string and they shouldn't have or maybe you want to reset a token you know keep all the settings that has but maybe generate a new token string for it that's what the regenerate option will let you do. So for example, all of you watching this video just saw at least most of the token string for the YouTube demo token. So I'm going to regenerate it. So it'll be something different. So I click on regenerate. Ask me if I'm sure because click on regenerate. What it'll do, it's going to generate a brand new token string over here for that same token. So still expires on June 30th, same scopes and everything else. It just has a new token string now. So anyone that was previously using that token can no longer use it unless they get access to this token string. So let's go back in here and let me refresh so I can find my token again. And where did you go? There it is at the very bottom now. So let's say now that someone got access to my token and I want to just flat out revoke it. I don't want to regenerate it. You know what? I've decided that whatever this token was being used for is no longer necessary. I just want to deactivate it so no one can use it, period. So I can come up here to revoke and click on revoke just to confirm that I want to do that. And then once I do that, it's now gone from my active. In fact, if I go to revoke over here, you'll see you can that's actually an old YouTube demo because if you notice the expiration date there. But if I scroll down here, you'll find the one for June 30th, 2019 that we just revoked. Okay, so as you can see, generating uh, personal access tokens and managing them is uh, pretty much a snap inside Azure DevOps. And it's worth mentioning again that these tokens are uh, essentially passwords and need to be treated as such. So here's a few key takeaways. Uh, first of all, you make use of personal access tokens or PATs when authenticating with Azure DevOps, you know, especially if it's third-party tools or, or something built around the SDK and the Azure DevOps extensibility model. Do not use the alternate credentials. I didn't really mention this earlier in the video, but when you bring up the page for personal access tokens, right below it is alternate security credentials. 
and that's a, a way of setting up essentially another password and user ID that'll work just like your credentials that you sign into Azure DevOps with and this might be used for some tools if there's anything out there for example that can't use a PAT for some reason you can set up alternate credentials the downside is is the alternate credentials have the same permissions that your normal credentials would so if they ever got compromised then there's no way to revoke them other than to just delete them period um, so do not use them they're not as secure and when assigning scopes to a PAT when you're creating it use the principle of least privilege so in other words, if it doesn't need it, don't add it. So like in the example I showed, all it needed was access to work items. So that was the only scope I gave to it. And then finally, store your PATs in a secure password store. You know, use something like KeyPass or LastPass or one of the many other key stores that are available out there. There are quite a few of them. So I hope you found this video uh, tutorial informational and useful. Um, if you like it, please click the like button. I'm just now starting a, a series of videos uh, mostly around Azure DevOps, at least the initial set will be around Azure DevOps, and hoping to produce at least one a week. So if you like what you're seeing here, click the subscribe button so you can come back and see what else gets posted next week. And thanks for watching. Watching.